and then lights go off. But today, your girl, she's got you. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today, I wanted to come to you a little bit barefaced, a little bit transparent, because you know, the thing I love to do is to be as real as possible. And one of the things that I get asked the most about is like basically having a YouTube channel, how I started it, what I use as well, and how I make it all work. So today we're gonna get into it. And a lot of people don't necessarily wanna share like the ins and out of what they use and how they do it, but today, your girl she's got you and I'm gonna give you the real tea when it comes to shooting editing filming and doing a YouTube video as you can see my face is not done and a lot of people think you know that a lot of us have flawless skin no honey a lot of us have amazing lighting and amazing makeup I have two large lights in front of me but as you can see I've got one big box light right here and one big box light right here and I have my window right here and I have a light to the side of me so I'll show you what it looks like when the lights go off now obviously the reason it looks this dark is because my camera settings are quite um, low because of the bright lights but this is what it looks like when it's brighter and without my lights so you can see what I actually look like it gives a bit of a different effect and to be honest I do love daylight but here in England, it's very difficult to roll with that daylight because the struggle is very real and it's very inconsistent. This is just an idea of what it looks like without the lighting. Now let's get back into it. Right, so next, let's get into the makeup. As you can see, my skin isn't flawlessly flawless. I have pores on my nose. I am shiny AF right now because I've put my sunscreen and everything on, but the power of makeup can transform me into a real life beauty guru. First thing has got to be the primer people necessary when you are shiny and textured. So 90% of the time I am an oil slick, so primer goes a long way. Next up is the foundation and honestly it can make or break your look. It's not even a joke and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the times my makeup is a lot heavier because of obviously the lights and all that kind of stuff. So the right foundation is essential. I am using the MAC Clay Skin Clarifying Foundation from The Body Shop. I used this, I did some videos on their Facebook page, used this foundation, love it, and found that it looks great on camera as well as in real life. Next up, the concealer is necessary, seeing as the dark circles are dark. I'm going in with my favorite full coverage concealer. It is from Kevin Kwan. Once that's blended in with the right brush, it looks amazing. I'm using this N38E brush from The Body Shop as well. Honestly, a little of this bad boy goes a long way okay setting my face is so necessary because the shine comes through this is not a time to be dewy when the light is melting your face so i'm going to use my sasha powder and my laura mercier i love both of these and they work really well i just set that girl right in there so next up it's my eyes and i'm using the um, body shop eye color sticks these are a great base with a bit of shine and i find that also when i put my um, eyeshadow colors on they stick on more and pop more and i'm going in with this brush also from the body shop I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda lazy when it comes to eye makeup, but as long as I've got a bit of pink or a red and a bit of orange, I'm good to go. No lie, false lashes are essential. For some reason, you just don't pop without them. My favorite are the Huda Beauties. And then I'm gonna use my Bare Minerals Foundation to contour. And I absolutely love this brush to contour with really really good right, i'm gonna line my lips with this liner from bite beauty love this shade and i'm gonna go in with this matte liquid lip called creek carnation love the way this looks and feels and smells okay so i'll be honest with you the makeup takes the longest time and if I haven't recorded, normally it's because I just can't be bothered to put a full face of quote unquote YouTube makeup on. But when I'm in it, I'm like, yeah, I'm good to go. Let me try and film one or two videos. Okay, next up, cameras and equipment. I get asked a lot about this. What camera do I use? What cameras do I recommend? Now, I do not think that the camera you use matters that, that much. But now that you know the game is very elevated at this point in time, you probably do need a decent camera. I've always used a Canon camera because I find it the easiest to use and that is what I taught myself on. 
and I also like my Canon for photography as well. My first recommendation is the Canon G7X2, I believe this is. Um, this is about three to four hundred pounds, it might be up to five hundred pounds, and this is quote unquote entry level, but it's a really good vlogging camera and it's a nice small, you know, flip screen handheld like this um here i am talking to the canon this is what it looks like on the canon and it's got really good lighting it's even got an element of softening to it and if you can notice that a little bit of softening um but what you'll see is that the colors aren't as true to life or as vibrant but it's a great way to start if you are struggling in the camera department and you don't have lots of money to spend on a camera and I really like this to vlog and stuff on. After that, it is the ATD. Again, a great camera. This is what I film my fashion videos on. It's great for you being able to see yourself. Okay, so this is what the ATD looks like. And what I really like about the lens that I use is that it's adjustable as well. This is a really high quality camera and it's actually quite affordable. It's a great way to start. But what I like is that you can go really far out like this. You can even see the mess on that side of the room. Please don't look at it. And then you can also bring it all the way back in as well. Okay, so this camera also has autofocus in video, which is really amazing, which my other camera does not. Okay, so this is my setup over here. And this is my 5D Mark III. Um, this camera has just got a full frame sensor. Basically, it picks up great color. It's really true to life, very vibrant. And I can put my L series lenses on, which are just fancy lenses that are really good quality, but it doesn't have autofocus in video. And um, I use it on a tripod and then I also attach it to this piece of software here. So I'm able to see myself but I also have a screen that I sometimes use. And then this is my desk and I usually have a notepad if I have something to say as well. So yeah, I think that's a little insight into the whole camera situation. I would say start cheap or start more affordable until you know what you're gonna do. Don't let not having 4,000 pounds for a camera stop you. Use a 300 pound camera and see if you can be consistent with it. Okay, so you might have heard me mention lenses. I actually think lenses are more important than the camera body. If you can get a good quality lens, then you are set. It's a lot of money, they are an investment, and I've always been able to sell my lenses on Amazon or eBay because lenses hold their value. The lenses that I recommend are the 50mm lens. This is a great lens for beauty, close-up detail. Again, it's just beautiful. This lens is an L series lens and I think this costs like a grand and a half but the entry level the entry level 50 mil lens it's a lot more affordable test it out try it out see what you think and a 50 mil lens basically comes across tighter okay so I have it with position I'm in the same place this is what the 50 mil looks like and it's great again if you want to show beauty detail it's great if you just want to be closer in but I prefer using the 35mm, I just find that it makes me look a little bit more attractive. So this is 35mm, this is my preference, and the fact that it's, you know, slightly wider, it makes you look a little bit more trim and slim and not so bloated. <laughs> um, so this is why it's my preference, and this is also an L series lens. This one's slightly more affordable than the 50mm lens, but I love it. And then the final lens I use, as you saw, was my wide angle, which is a 10 to 22. Love it for fashion because it gets lots in. It's basically a wide angle lens. When it comes to my lighting, I have two big lights right in front of me, which I showed you. I love these. They make such a big difference because, listen, the sky is gray and the sun comes in and out. It's an app utter mess and these are diva lights but initially i used um umbrella lights which you can buy on amazon you can get like three or four lights for like a hundred pounds or two hundred pounds and they are a great starting point so i would definitely go for the umbrella lights to start off with and see what you think lighting is very essential it can make or break your videos okay so when it comes to editing i use final cut pro x it is a piece of software that i bought however you can also use imovie iMovie. iMovie is free with a map. I've learned everything I know about editing and cutting and transitions. I learned it all by watching YouTube videos. So, you know, I'll see if there's a playlist of how to edit out there and you can check that out on what to do. It just takes time. Again, I tell people I've been doing this for a long time. I don't think you need fa fancy editing or fancy transitioning. I think all you need is a good and original idea and people will watch 
what you're doing if you are doing something that is great. Finally, last bit of tips when it comes to doing a YouTube video. Have your own idea, come up with something creative. You don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. You might see something that's out there and you think, you know what, I could put my own twist on this. I could put my own personality on this. I can make this a little bit better. I can apply this to beauty. I can apply this to fashion. I can apply this to something else and just keep doing it consistently. You need to give people a reason to watch your videos. So looking at your thumbnail and your title is essential, honestly. Give people a reason to watch. Like, make them be like, oh, maybe I'll have a look at that, see if that's interesting. Don't lie, because if you lie, it's actually gonna affect your video. So if people click on your video and then click off straight away, that will actually like reduce how reduce how many people see your video because YouTube like looks out for that and they know that if you use something fake to grab people's attention, they'll knock down your channel. So just be aware of that. And the last few points are to have passion and focus. Please get into YouTube and creating content because you feel like it for the right reasons. I did YouTube for four years and I didn't make a single penny. It was every weekend, every Saturday, every Sunday. It was my, ah. Uh, what I love doing, it is still what I love doing. I love sitting in front of this camera, having a chat with you guys, being on Instagram, being on Snapchat, and just, this is like my happy place, not gonna lie, it's literally my happy place. So you really wanna genuinely be passionate about making videos and not trying to make a quick buck. And then focus, so what it is that you wanna deliver, why do you wanna deliver it, just keep pushing at that. That's all it is really. Right guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration. If you're thinking of doing YouTube or if you just wanna know what's going on behind the scenes, there it is. There isn't much rocket science to it, but this is just the reality of YouTube lifestyle. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you're not following me on my Instagram and my Snapchat and my Twitter, make sure you do. I will catch you in my next video. Bye.